Hi, I'm Christopher Picaria and I'm teaching in the spring of 2021 here in the School of International Liberal Studies at Waseda. Uh, two main courses, uh, Introduction to Business, which is a big uh, introductory course, as the title suggests. Uh, mostly first year students, but uh, we do get some students uh, who are taking it um, in subsequent ap academic years and uh, Designing Corporate Communications, which is an intermediate course. Introduction to Business, uh, as the title suggests, uh, introduces basic concepts, business issues for students in general. Uh, and it's, of course, very useful if you're thinking of going to work for a company, but equally, I think it's useful if you go to work for an NGO, for a government organization, or you're looking to go on to graduate school subsequently, and you want some feel for markets and business enterprise, which is a significant part um, of the uh, society that we, uh, we live in. Designing corporate communications is, as generally the title suggests, um, very much focused on the communicative act and we talk primarily about application of this in corporations, but I want to emphasize right from the beginning that corporations are not just for-profit organizations. Uh, they are also often MPOs. Uh, in the Japanese case, Hojin uh, Corporation. We have educational uh, corporations, for example, such as Waseda is. So any organization that you might go to work for the communicative act with external and external stakeholders is hugely important. The course looks very much at uh, contemporary digital communications. Uh, we're in a world of ubiquitous social media, ubiquitous visuality, as we all understand. And what does this mean for organizations and indeed for individuals, and we're gonna focus a lot on individuals in the course as well. Um, what does it mean for how you communicate with the world at large? Indeed, one of the exercises will be a, uh, effectively, everyone is going to have a go at being a YouTuber uh, to make a uh, self-promotion video. And more and more companies in Japan and abroad are actually asking uh, candidates for jobs to actually make a short promotion video. So that'll be one of the first exercises we'll be doing. And uh, then we'll also have a very substantial group project. And interestingly, and un very, very unusually, this time round, the course in the second half uh, will be a collaborative endeavor uh, with a uh, close colleague, research collaborator, uh, long time associate and indeed friend of mine, uh, Professor Adam Johns, uh, who is currently the head of department um, in Keigaka, um, so in uh, management and uh, marketing over at um, Sophia University. And uh, although uh, students will stay on their uh, side of the institutional divide in terms of working with group members, um, some of the class activities uh, will be uh, online and will be interactive. So you'll actually get to mix with some Georgie students. And uh, we will be looking very specifically um, at the transformation of the university, particularly in the context of post-COVID and, and whatnot, and thinking about all the communicative challenges involved. And so that would be uh, uh, an extra layer of interesting endeavor um, in a course that's been very much focusing on applying what we call design thinking. So effectively designers' ways of seeing the world, of problem discovery, of coming up with creative solutions to breathe new life, new value into an organization or a brand, or to create new ways of connecting uh, with a product or, or, as I say, an organization. So we'll be applying design thinking to the Communications Act and the group project will be looking very specifically about the future of the university campus. And it's particularly meaningful, therefore, to do this as a cross-campus endeavor um, at a particular time where, because of the pandemic, uh, we're required to go at least partially virtual. And you're looking at now, of course, as a video on demand. And so we're really looking at how the world has changed and can change, how we can embrace that change to leverage it into positive kind of ways and look to develop uh, the kind of skill sets I think we need, um, not just as consumers, but uh, increasingly as producers in a digital age. A little bit about me. 
Um, some of you may have discerned from my accent, uh, I am Australian. I've been in the School of International Law Studies since 2004, when it was first established. Uh, for a long time, I was the only person teaching uh, business here in the faculty as a, as a tenured member of, of faculty, until very fortunately we're joined by Morimoto Sensei, who teaches advertising here, and some of you may have already taken her classes. And uh, my recent research interests, well, some of the stuff I'm working on is actually higher education, marketization, branding, and the role of the university campus in a virtual age. And I was working on that before COVID ever came along and we had to actually become, um, in some sense, con con content creators, um, a kind of low level, not so popular YouTubers, for example. Um, many of us professors uh, are resorting to these kind of platforms. So I was already kind of thinking about those issues. And so COVID presents some um, interesting uh, opportunities for me to think further about that research theme. Uh, other areas in which I'm working on, very much focusing on place, promoting place, branding place. For example, I go regularly to the International Place Branding Association International Conference, um, as I do with Dr. Johns from Sophia, and this is one of the reasons why we will be uh, collaborating. I'm uh, continuing to do work on economic uh, nationalism as well in relation to foreign investment. Uh, that's something I wrote my doctorate on quite a long time ago at Australian National University, but revisiting that. So in, in a sense, one of my main areas of interest is where the world of ideas, and we sometimes say the ideational of communications, of discourse, meets hard-headed economic realities. and. Related to that, um, I'm interested in the business of so many things that are not routinely thought of as a business. And my teaching in my ZEMI and my other major area of research interest is around the creative and cultural industries. So a range of fields that have design or creativity at the heart of them and where people have a very high level of intrinsic motivation, they're drawn to work in those fields, um, because they have a very strong aesthetic or a problem-solving orientation, and they may not be particularly commercially focused. So how does this work out? How do we have, in the words of Richard Caves, one of the, uh, the greatest scholars on the creatives in um, creative industries, contracts between arts and commerce? And so I'm very interested in all of those issues, and it also is very relevant, of course, to the educational endeavour. We don't like to think of universities as a business, uh, but in many respects they have to follow basic business logics, um, even if their goals are actually not to make uh, a profit. Needless to say, of course, we do all the kinds of things that businesses do. You know, the branding, the brand extension, the communications endeavours, the strategic planning, all of those kind of things. So, in short, um, my interests are really around uh, creativity, design, enterprise, and place, but place uh, defined in very broad terms. I'm very much interested in virtual places, in imagined places, uh, the uh, way in which we construct our own identities, our national identities, our regional identities. Um, it, it goes on in our heads, it's often um, uh, very, as we say, semiotically, very symbolically rich. It's very linguistically rich. Um, and so, in a sense, the life of the mind is often tied to place, and it often then has very significant economic implications as well. And so some of the work I've been doing has been very specifically on nation branding, for example. And that's one project I'm, I'm currently involved in, um, in relation to the uh, European Union, which is bigger than nations, obviously, it's 27 member, member states now, and how they use their cultural and creative industries um, as a vehicle for diplomacy. So if any of those sets of issues are interesting, even if you're not taking one of my courses, feel free to wander by my office where I am now, um, consultation hours, or just contact me in advance, um, maintaining sufficient social distance, we can talk about your interests. And uh, I look forward to, over the coming semester and beyond, um, hopefully getting to meet all of you, uh, whether that happens virtually, 
uh, through the Zoom platform or whether it happens uh, through one of the live sessions or drop-in sessions or um, consultation times that we have here on campus. Um, either way, I look, to get to know, uh, look forward to getting to know you better um, as individuals, hearing about uh, what you're interested in, what you aspire to do, how the world is changing and all the implications that has in terms of what you want to be doing, uh, developing your own skill set. And I'll just simply say too that every time I talk with students, I'm very confident that I always learn something. So it's always a two-way thing. It's a dialogue. It's not me talking at you, although I'm doing it now with a camera. Um, that two-way interaction is really what makes um, this job for me here at Waseda extraordinarily satisfying. So look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you.